so when we finished off yesterday, we had the uh, two pieces of foam glued and in the vacuum bag to help make sure that we had a really good bond between the two. Picking up today, it was time to decide on the outer dimensions of the board. So this was a mix of a little bit of research uh, along with a bit of freestyling. Uh, so you can look online for a lot of information on rocker measurements, uh, the pros and cons of more or less rocker. You can find lengths for different weights. All that's online. It's worth having a good read. But when it comes to the radiuses at the end, some of it's aesthetic. I used a batten, sailing batten, but any sort of flexible, uh, semi-stiff flexible you know, rod would work well. Uh, you just want a nice, fair curve, uh, and you want it to be symmetric. So I cut it with a razor blade out of uh, cardboard. The way I did it is I traced out all of my dimensions on a half template. And the reason you do a half template is so that you can get symmetry side to side. Some people actually use a quarter template, and then they flip it four times. I used a half template and I flipped it once so that I knew the board would be symmetric side to side. And I went ahead and traced out using the cardboard and the sharpie the shape I wanted on the foam. And the next step will be to cut out the uh, shape. There are a couple ways to do it. You could do it with a jigsaw. Uh, I chose to do it with first scoring it with a razor blade. Uh, and after I scored it, I kind of scored to the center line uh, where I felt the epoxy. And then I went through with a pull saw and uh, used just the thin blade pull saw to cut the entire outline. Luckily, because you score first, the pull saw likes to follow the cut of the razor blade. It's a bit difficult just because of the epoxy joint. The actual foam cuts really, really quickly. If you're worried at all about precision, it's best to be outside the line, as the sanding is not difficult later on. So stay outside the line a little bit and uh, go, go about your business. I took my inspiration off of another board uh, that a friend had, and uh, that helped me decide what to do. Once you're done cutting it, uh, it's going to be a little wavy no matter how perfect you are with the saw. So you have to do a little bit of fairing. Uh, and that's what I did next. And I used a long board. And the longer the board and the longer the strokes that you do, the more fair your surface will be. So it's important that you get nice long strokes in. You can see uh, I'm doing nice long strokes here. Sometimes they're a little bit short, but the idea is that you'll get all the highs and lows out and you'll have a nice fair curve the entire length of the board. You can then tag in your corners uh, with a smaller block and your ends as you wish. And uh, after that, you're going to get ready to start shaping the top of the board. The top of the board has a slope that starts about one inch in from the end. So I made this little tool to uh, trace one inch in from the end uh, that just follows the track and the Sharpie fits into the hole so you know kind of what you're dealing with and you can get a nice consistent line. So that when I'm sanding, I know exactly where I am on the board so I can still keep my shape consistent with a consistent edge all around the entire board. Here, I think it's as much preference as anything else. I've looked at a bunch of wakeboards and there's different chamfers, there's different angles, rounded edges, sharp edges, anything you can imagine. So I knew I was going to have a constant angle around the board, uh, or at least a constant angle for some of the board. I used a power tool uh, to take down the majority of the material on the edges, and then I used uh, a hand block and a, a long board uh, to try and help keep things fair and have a nice consistent shape all around. And uh, once you're done sanding, the board starts to really come alive and starts looking like a wakeboard, and you can see there are edges and rails, and uh, it starts to become more fun because you're holding a wakeboard.